Okay, guys, we are live from the quarantine and it is Saturday morning and I'm super excited to bring back our Tabata party Saturday. Um, due to popular demand, we're going to be doing uh, Tabata's again today. So um, for this, uh, what you'll need is if you have a resistance band, go ahead and grab it because we can use that for our overhead squats. If you don't have a resistance band, that's fine. Um, and then uh, we'll need a surface to do um, chair dips off of, like either a chair or a coffee table or couch or, or something like that. And then um, we will also need um, some dumbbells or a kettlebell to do um, RDLs. So um, that is, yeah, that's uh, most of it. Um, we you can also use some dumbbells for this lateral lunge that we're going to be doing. But um, most of the most of the exercises in our um, in our workout are going to be body weight, um, short of those things that I just mentioned. Um, story of the day. Um, I'm guessing that a lot of people are familiar with uh, Ludwig von Beethoven's um, life, um, but if you are not, he is a pretty fascinating dude. He was, um, uh, he played a, like a crucial, crucial role in the transition of classical music into romantic music. Um, he is he is known by musicians to be very um, his his uh, his um, music is very cerebral. And um, he also uh, went, uh, started going deaf when he was 30. Um, as a child, um, his music teachers thought that he was, uh, he was horrible. You know, he was horrible as a violinist. He, um, he, they said that he would never, ever be a composer. And his dad was like, you know what? My kid's pretty awesome. I think I'll take his education into my own hands. And uh, um, we're going we're gonna to keep going with his music. And um, luckily, he had like a really supportive dad who, um, you know, wanted him to keep going. Um, when he realized that his hearing was going, he was pretty distraught because he was a music teacher, piano teacher at the time, and, and he um, realized that he wasn't going to be able to do that. But he continued composing music, and um, he had all of these songs inside of him, and, and he decided that that the deafness was not going to keep them inside, that he was going to bring them out. And um, in uh, 1824, after he had composed his ninth symphony um, to the poem Ode to uh, Joy, he uh, conducted that. And um, uh, when he was done, the audience just exploded in applause but he couldn't hear the audience, so he didn't turn around to see them. And uh, one of the chorus uh, members uh, saw that he, you know, didn't recognize that they were, they were applauding. And so he went up on stage and grabbed Ludwig by the elbow and turned him around. But by the time he had turned him around, everybody had stopped applauding. And so he just stood there and one by one, each audience member got up in a standing ovation and clapped and the applause was thunderous. And it was noted that you could see one single tear dripping down uh, Beethoven's face. Um, and uh, I love this story because it's, it's one of those stories where um, you know, he was told no, you know, by somebody in authority, and he decided that that wasn't going to stop him, that he was going to pursue this dream, that he had something inside of him that he needed to express. And I think that's a, like a really, really fantastic lesson uh, for all of us, because I, I think we all have that within us, and it's just a matter of finding what it is, what we need to express, and not letting, not letting somebody who doesn't see it, um, you know, push it down. So um, anyway, uh, I know that you have this awesome workout inside of you, and we're going to bring it out right now, and uh, we're going get to our, get our sweat on, okay? Actually, we're going to start with some quads, um, actually knee to chest. So we're just going to stand in place, and I'm going to bring my knee up to my chest and then back down. So if you're having any issues with um, trying to stay stable with this or with balance, just find a spot on your wall and just look at it while you do this, and that should help with your balance a lot, all right? So just knee to chest. So what I'm trying to do too is I'm trying to bring my pelvis forward to get this really nice quad stretch and, this, and squeezing my glute at the top. Let's go ahead and we're going to do 10 on each side. So I think this is maybe about four. Ah. Six. Take
taking our time, getting that nice stretch at the top. Nine. Ah, and 10 as I almost fall over. All right, now let's just do our walking quad stretch, but we're gonna do that in place. So we're gonna do opposite arm to opposite leg. Woo, that quad is tight. Yeah, it is. All right, let's switch it out to the other side. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to really elongate the side of my body and I'm trying to keep that knee underneath that hip. All right, so what I'm not doing is I'm not bringing that knee out to the side, keeping that knee underneath that hip, reaching, reaching, reaching. It's been a while since we've done these. We do these walking across the dojo's floor often as part of our warm up. It's great that you can just do these in place. You can stand up from your computer during the day. Just do some quad stretches. Get the get that body to elongate. Whew. I know that I've been at the computer more than more than uh, I ever have at the dojo during this whole pandemic. And man, I am feeling it in my hips and in my thoracic spine. All right, guys, let's do one more on each side. Oops, falling over. All right. Hey, while we're standing here, let's go ahead and grab that knee and then we're just gonna rotate that ankle. So let's go 10 times in one direction. If you need to, you can hold onto a countertop or your couch. And then we're gonna go 10 in the other direction. Wow, everything's feeling tight this morning. Woo! <laughs> yeah! Let's get it all loosened up. All right. Take it to the other side, again, as I fall over. Ah, feeling this up into my calf, which is great. Take it back, the other way. Ha 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 ha, awesome. All right, guys, let's go to the floor and let's go ahead and do our shin box. So I have my knee lined, uh, my leg, my shin uh, lined up in front of me, and then I have my knee to my foot. Now I'm gonna transition to the other side, all right? And when I'm doing this, I wanna keep my back as upright as possible, so if I need to, I can put my hands behind me. Otherwise, I'll just try to keep that back straight. Let's go ahead and do five on each side. Uh, it's okay if it, if you travel with it, if it makes you walk forward, that is all right. What I'm trying to do is get my feet flat on the ground at the top, and then I'm transitioning. Now my body is facing a completely different direction. Now my body's facing forward, and now my body's facing the other side, all right? So, really getting those hips to loosen up, slowly crawling closer and closer towards you. Let's go ahead and do one more on each side. All right, go ahead and reset. <laughs> and then let's just do a couple of our shin box kick throughs while we're at it, all right? So I'm gonna take this back leg and I'm gonna kick it forward and it's gonna line up with my belly button and then I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna switch over to the other side I'm gonna kick my leg around, still keeping that back really upright. If I need to, I'll put my hands behind me. All right, get that leg forward, boom. Bring it back around. Ha ha, kick it forward, bring it back. Let's go ahead and do one more on each side. Oh, this is good medicine for my tight, tight hips. Woo! All right. Okay, guys, so now we're gonna go into our frog stretch, one of my favorite stretches. I feel like I say that about everything, but 
really dig this frog stretch. So I'm going to bring my knees out to the side. My feet are going to come off at about a 90 degree angle from those knees. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my hips back towards my feet and then I'm going to squeeze the earth with my knees together for five, four, three, two, one, and then I'm going to relax. So I'm going to come forward, push forward with that. All right. So getting that tension off that groin, maybe going a little bit deeper, pushing back, squeeze those knees together for five, four, three, two, one, relax. Maybe you can get a little bit more of a stretch out of this. All right, let's go ahead and push back for five, four, three, two, one. All right. Next, guys, what we're going to do is our yoga windmill. So I'm going to come into this high plank. I'm going to bring my hand, I'm sorry, my foot next to my hand, and then I'm going to reach forward, getting this knee over that foot, really straightening out that back leg, getting tension in that back leg, reaching, 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 turning my arm and my shoulder, following that hand with my eye. Now my hand is facing towards you. Then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna go into the world's greatest stretch, bringing that elbow towards the floor. You don't have to hit a goal of actually getting your elbow to the floor. You just wanna stretch it towards the floor. Bring those hands together, I mean those feet together, and then switch it out to the other side. Again, getting that knee over that ankle, getting some nice flexion in that, in that ankle, reaching, reaching, reaching. As I re I'm reaching, I'm rotating my arm in that shoulder socket, and I'm following it with my hand, following it with my eyes, come down, into that world's greatest stretch. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Whoa, yeah. All right, let's do one more. On each side, reaching, rotating, tension in those legs. Coming in. Oh, I got a nice crack in my neck. Ah, switch it out. Get that nice stretch at the top here. Reaching, 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 rotating slowly. Woo. All right. Bringing that elbow down. Ha ha. Great job, guys. All right. So actually, let's do one more. Let's do one more stretch. So we're going to go ahead and go into our side lying archer. So I want to keep those knees stacked. I'm going to bring both hands out in front of me. I'm going to drag that hand across my chest. I'm going to reach behind me, trying to get that shoulder to the ground as I look behind me, all right? I want you to hold it here. I want you to breathe, keeping those knees stacked. Whew. Come back in. Bring it back out again. Oh, getting those shoulders to loosen up. Getting that chest to open up, that thoracic spine. Whoo! Getting a nice rotation. Going on, let's do one more on this side and then we'll take it to the other side. Ah! All right. Switching to the other side. All right, draw that bow, keep those knees stacked. Ga, 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 ga. Uh, trying to bring that shoulder to the ground. I don't know, I'm probably about five to six inches away from the ground with that back shoulder. For some reason, this side always feels tighter than my other side. Come back, do it again. Ha, 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 ha. Nice. Woo. Okay. One more. One more. Uh. 
just was thinking this is a really funny position to uh, draw and shoot a bow from. Probably be really difficult, <laughs> maybe a little stealthy. Anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through each of the exercises in our Tabata and uh, to get used to them before we actually go into the Tabata itself. So the first thing that we're gonna do is overhead squats. So if you have a resistance band, fantastic. Let's grab that. Um, you can also just use body weight. So you can just have your arms up or if you have a really, really light dumbbell or just one dumbbell, grab that. I'm gonna use my resistance band. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna get those arms out straight. I'm gonna bring my feet out, my toes out to the side, making room for my hips to travel down. I'm gonna come down and up, keeping that tension in that upper body as I come down, getting that depth, depth before dishonor, always remember that. We wanna hit that depth, which means I wanna get my hip to line up with my knees. If not getting a little bit lower than that, let's go ahead and do 10 of these. Oh, this feels so good on my shoulders, getting that tension going on. If you have a belt or a towel, you can also use that. You can pause this video and go grab something like that. Whatever you can hold on to, to get that tension in that upper back. A pair of jeans. Just don't use the cat for this one. They will not like it, all right? So then we're gonna do our X crunches. That's gonna be the next exercise. So I'm gonna lay down on the ground. My legs are gonna be out straight. My arms are gonna be out straight in this X position. X position, oh my goodness. Now I'm gonna reach forward, come back down. Let's go ahead and do 10 of those. Arms and legs straight the entire time. Really think about those abs, guys. Get your attention, your intention in those abs as you're doing this, because we do not wanna throw ourselves forward we're utilizing those abs to crunch us up and bring us forward, all right? So don't, blah, don't try to do that. Try to really concentrate on those abs to get you forward, all right? If it takes you a little bit more time, that's okay. Let's go ahead and do 10 of these. I think this is seven. Eight, nine, and ten. Ha ha ha. Awesome. All right. The next exercise that we have in this circuit is going to be our lateral lunge. So, what I want to do with the lateral lunge is I want to do a lateral lunge with return. So, maybe as far as our warm up is concerned, we won't use weights, but if you would like to, during the circuit, grab a goblet, that's fine, or grab a kettlebell, or you can even have two weights. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our lateral lunge, trying to get deep with it. I'm keeping my chest up, but I'm keeping that butt really pulled to that back wall, and then I'm coming back in. So that's the return part, all right? Coming out and coming back into center. We have a bunch of different configurations for our lunges. This is one of them. All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna do five on each side. I think this is four. And five. All right, now we have our glute bridge, but we're gonna do the frog version of this glute bridge. So I'm gonna to come to the ground. I'm gonna bring my knees in close to my butt. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let my knees just fall out to the side as they may. Now I have my feet, the, the soles of my feet together, all right? And then I'm gonna put my hands out to the side just for stability. I'm gonna bring my hips up into the air and back down. So you're probably gonna have not as much of a range of motion as you normally would with this glute bridge. 
If for some reason this hurts your knees at all, just do a regular glute bridge, okay? But if this does, if this feels okay and comfortable, well, you know, as comfortable as a glute bridge frog would ever feel, go ahead and do that. So go ahead, give me 10. Try to get that lower back fully engaged into the ground when you come down and then come back up. You're really squeezing your glutes with this, guys. So this isn't going into your lower back. It's your glutes that are activating as you're doing this. Yep, letting those knees just fall out to the side. This is just one of many, many variations of the glute bridge. Everybody's physiology is different. You're gonna feel this differently than um, I will possibly feel it. All right, eight. And if you wanted to make this harder, you could always put like a dumbbell right here on your lower abdomen just like when we're doing our, um, our barbell hip lifts. 10, oh, right. Okay, guys, then what we have next is our push-ups. So we're gonna be doing 20 seconds of push-ups, but we're gonna be doing that four times. So choose whether or not you're gonna do this from an elevated surface or from the ground. Go ahead and give me five of them. I want you to have your butt elevated. I don't wanna see your butt come down. That means you've lost your abs and you're keeping your elbows in tight to your body as you're bringing your chest down to the surface. So whether or not you're doing that from an elevated surface or if you're doing this from the ground, make sure to get that chest down, all right? And you can also do an eccentric push-up if you choose. We were working on these yesterday. So what that is, is I'm doing a 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 count all the way to the ground. And then I'm just going doing a, a bit of an assist up. Same thing, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. All right. That's going to get you stronger, get you closer to doing those strict push-ups. And then we have our RDL. So grab your weight for this. All right, so for my RDL, my feet are in a narrow stance. I have my dumbbells or my kettlebell out in front of me. My lats are on. I'm coming down to at least below my knees and then really bringing those hips forward at the top, all right? So I'm bringing that butt out to that back wall, getting in this nice hinge position and then coming forward with it, all right? So we've got 10 of these. Five, six, seven, eight. Guys, do not forget to keep those lats engaged. Don't lose those lats. Don't let those arms come out of the socket. Keep those lats engaged like you have towels that you're trying to hold onto in your armpits. Woo! I might switch those out. For a little bit lighter weight. <laughs> that was aggressive thinking on my behalf this morning. <laughs> All right, so next we have our chair dips. So if you have a chair or a coffee table or some form of elevated surface, fantastic. If for some reason you don't have that, you can grab a dumbbell and you can go ahead and do your overhead tricep press. All right, but what we're trying to do trying to work those triceps. So coming over to my surface, keeping my butt close to that surface, coming down, feeling those triceps engage, come up. So my legs are out straight. This is gonna make it harder if I wanna make it a little bit easier. I'll have my knees at a 90 degree angle come down. I want you to get that stretch with this, all right? So don't go into any sort of position where you feel pain, just feel that stretch in those shoulders and the tricep, all right? Coming down and up. So what I'm not doing is I'm not all the way out here. I wanna stay in tight to my surface as I raise and lower. Yep, giving me 10 of those. All right, then I have my hip lifts. So if you want to, you can always anchor yourself on a couch or on a coffee table, 
or you can just go ahead and do this from the floor. So I'm gonna bring my arms out to the side for stability. I'm gonna bring my knees in. Now I'm gonna do either one of two ways with this. So I'm either just gonna bring my knees into my face to get up onto those shoulder blades, all right? Or I'm gonna bring my knees in and pike it up. Bring my knees in, pike it up, all right? So whichever version you're doing, go ahead and give me 10 of those. Again, guys, we're not coming up onto our necks. We're just coming up onto our shoulder blades. Eight. Nine. Ha ha. And 10. Nice. All right. So we got those. Then we're going to turn over and we're going to do shoulder taps. So what I want to do for this, I want to come into this high plank. I'm going to bring my feet out to the side for stability. I'm going to touch one shoulder and then the other shoulder. Touch one shoulder and then the other. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping my butt about the same height as my, as my shoulders. I don't want to push back with this. That puts a crazy strain on those shoulders, all right? So I'm even maybe a tiny bit forward as I'm going from side to side. And I'm also not rotating those hips as I do this, okay? Keeping it super stable. When you're in the Tabata itself, I want you to take this slow and controlled. I don't want you to rush it, okay? So go ahead and give me five on each side. All right, then we're gonna go into our shoulder rocking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this glute bridge position, go up into my glute bridge. My arms are reaching up to the ceiling. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach with my one, my one arm, that hip is gonna slightly raise as I bring my opposite shoulder to the ground, trying to touch the ground with it, and then take it to the other side. All right. You'll feel this tension also in your legs. It's a slight movement, rocking from side to side. Those hips are gonna travel ever so slightly with that shoulder that raises, trying to get that other shoulder to touch the ground. Let's go ahead and do five on each side. This is a really delicate, tiny, little, intense movement. All right. We got those. Then that was it. Those are all of the exercises that we're going to be doing while we're doing our Tabata. Let's go ahead and grab some water right now before we actually start. When I hit the timer, we're gonna work for 20 seconds. For the first circuit, we're gonna do overhead squats. We're gonna rest for 10 seconds. And then for 20 seconds, we're gonna do X crunches. So we're only doing those two exercises to start. And we're gonna do that for four minutes, all right? So get ready. If you are using a band or a belt or a towel or something to create tension in your overhead squats, Go ahead and grab that. All right, guys, we're starting in three, two, one. Beep. All right. Make sure you get that depth. Trying to keep that upper back as upright as possible. We're trying not to bend over into this. That, that, that um, you lose mobility in your hips if you bend your chest forward. Okay, now we got 10 seconds of rest, and then we're going into our X crunch. Three, two, one, go into that X crunch. Arms and legs are straight. Think about those abs drawing you forward like you got a rope tied to your abs and somebody's pulling you up towards them who's sitting across from you. That's our rest period, 10 seconds. Going into our overhead squats again. Here we go. Just in case you can't hear the um, timer, I made it a little quieter because it was so alarming, but I think I made it a little too quiet. 
So I'll just keep calling out what the time is. Three seconds left. And we're resting. Going into those X crunches. One of my favorite ab exercises, too. One, hit it. Ha ha. Ugh. Uh, all right, going back into our squats. Three, two, one. Get that tension, get that tension in that upper back, pulling those shoulder blades together, keeping those arms straight. All right, we got about five seconds left. Two, one, transitioning into our X crunch. Two, one, going for it. You got this, you got this. Touch those toes, get that little bit of Stretch at the top and those hips. One. All right. This is going to be our last set of each of these exercises, guys. So last set, best set, and we're going. Ha ha. All right, guys. Four. Three, two, one. X crunch, X force. What? All right, two, one. Go for it. Ah. I have faith in you. You got this. Chin to work hard. You got it. That was it. All right, guys, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Let's go ahead and grab some water to start. All right. So for our next exercise set, we're going to be doing our lateral lunge with return. Lateral lunge with return, okay? Going from side to side going back into center. And then we have our glute bridge with frog. So coming to the ground, letting my knees just fall open, getting the soles of my feet together, putting my hands out to the side, bringing those hips up to the ceiling as high as I can, feeling this in my glutes, not my lower back. And then coming back down, trying to get that lower back to touch against the ground and then back up. So those are the two exercises in our next set. We're gonna rest for about 10 more seconds, and then we're gonna go right into it. All right, guys, we're gonna start in three, two, one, go. All right, my lateral lunge. Boom, and return. Get that butt really pulled to that back wall as you're doing this. My chest is still upright, okay? And then going into my glute bridge frog, I got about three seconds left. Heels, soles of feet together and go for it. Getting those hips up as high as you can. Your motion, your range of motion is gonna be a little bit limited with this. Again, if this feels funky at all in your groin or in your knees, just do a regular group, glute bridge, that is fine. Three, two, one, switch it back out to the lateral lunge. All right, now, wanna make it a little bit harder? Go ahead and grab a weight 
And we're going for it. Boom. Yeah. Feeling it, guys. Feeling it. You got this. Ah. Two. One. Awesome. Transitioning into my glute bridge frog. Woo! And we're going for it. Really concentrate on keeping this in those glutes, not the lower back. Trying to get those, that butt up and those hips up as high as you can to the ceiling. Three, two, one. Switching it back out again. All right. If you have two lighter weights, you can always just use the two lighter weights. Or you can have two dumbbells together up here. Ah, really feeling that stretch in that hinge position, bringing that butt back. All right, guys, three seconds left. And going into my frog. Working, working all around those glutes. Getting ready for summer. Getting ready for our bikini bodies. Really stretch it at the top, guys. Pause at the top. Three, two, one. Going back into my lateral lunge. Three, two, one, hitting it. This is our last set of each of these. So these are gonna be our best sets. No sloppy form, guys. Keeping it tight. If you get super gassed in any of these Tabatas, just pause, take, take one out, take a rest. Going into our our frogs, this is our last frogs. Make them excellent. And we're going. Squeezy, squeezies. Squeeze and pause at the top. Three, two, one. Nice. Next set of exercises, we have our push ups. In our RDLs, we're either gonna do our push-ups from an elevated surface, or we're gonna do them from the ground. If you have a resistance band, you can always put that resistance band in a figure eight, double it up just above your elbows. Everything's together, everything's tight, everything's on coming down, and it's gonna help slingshot you up. It's another way to get closer to getting those strict push-ups in. Then we have our RDLs. So if you have one kettlebell, that's fine, or one heavy dumbbell, or if you have two lighter dumbbells, go ahead and grab those. RDLs, gonna be bringing that butt to that back wall, getting into that really nice hinge position, keeping those lats engaged, guys. Keep those, keep those lats right through here engaged as opposed to letting it pull out, keeping that back flat. All right. We are gonna hit it here in three, two, one. That's a little better. All right. Push-ups. If you get tired trying to do your, your strict push-ups, don't let that form falter. Either go into your eccentric push-ups or go into an elevated push-up, but make them beautiful, all right? Switching out to my RDLs. All right, three, two, one, going for it. Squeeze those hips forward at the top, guys. Really squeeze those glutes. Keeping that head in a neutral position, so not looking up with it, all right? Keeping those eyes at about 45 degree angle in front of you, and Switching it out to my push-ups. All right. 
Three, two, one. Going for it. Get that chest to touch the floor. That's the full push up, all right? If you're missing having your chest touch the floor, you're not doing the full range of motion with this, okay? And switch it out. Woo! Push ups add up, don't they? All right. And we're going for it. RDL party all day, every day. So good for you. Can't wait to get you guys back in the dojo. Get those barbells out, getting those deadlifts on. Two, one. Switching it back out. All right. I can feel myself getting pretty tired with those push ups. So I'm going to go ahead to an elevated surface just to make sure that my form does not waver. If you have the ability at your home to get that height of that surface to decrease, going say from your countertop to a coffee table to maybe a small step stool, keep decreasing that elevation so that you're building up that muscle to get closer and closer to your strict push ups. RDLs, here we go, here we go. Boom. Yeah. All right, and switching it out. This time, I'm gonna do my eccentric push-up. So coming to the floor, three, two, one, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, slowly lower. Assist up, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Super slow-mo, lower guys, boom. You're gonna really feel this. And that was, oh, one more set of RDLs. It's gonna be our last set. And we're going for it. Ugh, squeezy, squeezy, those glutes at the top. Cracking the walnut in the butt cheeks. I don't ever crack walnuts in my butt cheeks, but that is a visual. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we're going to get some water and get some rest. All right. What do we got next? Chair dips, hip lifts. It's just a constant party today with this Tabatas. So for my chair dips, getting those triceps to turn on, getting my butt close to that surface coming down. This is the progression. If you wanna make it a little bit harder, you can have those legs out straight. Again, if you don't have a surface where you're able to lower yourself, go ahead and do your overhead tricep press. Just want you to make sure you keep those elbows in tight to your head. Don't flare those elbows out, keep them in tight. All right, full extension. Okay, then we have our hip lifts. So coming down to the ground, bringing my arms out to the side for stability. Knees are up. Knees are either gonna come into my face or I'm gonna pike my legs up. But I'm just coming onto those shoulder blades. I'm not rocking back onto that neck, okay? So that's the range of motion with that exercise. Grab a little bit more water and then we're gonna go into it. Guys. We are starting with our chair dips in three, two, one, beep. Got this. Ha ha. Ah. Ah. All right, guys. Three, two, one. Feels really good to get those triceps a working. Hip lifts, hands out to the sides. I'm coming straight up. 
You can always bring your knees into your face. Just don't slam your face with those knees. I'm gonna pike it up. Boom. Boom. All right, three, two, one. Woo! Feeling really warmed up now. Yeah, I am. How about you? All right. Chair dips. Tricep City. Population. Chris Roberts doing this workout with me this morning. Thanks, Chris. It's always so nice to have somebody to work out with. And switching it back out to those glorious, glorious hip lifts. And going for it. Boom. Just getting on those shoulder blades. Being nice on that neck. Ah. All right. Guys, going back to our chair dips. You got this. If you've been doing this the progressed harder way and you start to feel your form falter, go ahead and bring those knees in. That's a fine. Just keep close to that surface. Going back into my hip lifts. All right. Going for it. Boom. Ah. If you have a couch that you want to anchor yourself to or a heavy coffee table, you can do that. Get some elevation with it. Otherwise, just put those hands out to the side. My ponytail is not doing me any favors with that this morning. <laughs> so, chair dips. Last set, best set, going for it. Whew. Feel those triceps on. Working it. Ah. All right, guys, five seconds left. You got this. Woo! All right. Going into my hip lifts. And then no more hip lifts for today. Unless you want to. Boom. Yeah. Going for it, going for it. You got it, you got it. And done. All right, it's break time, guys. Grabbing that water, getting some rest in before we start our next Tabata. All right, which is actually our last set of Tabatas. So we have our shoulder taps and we have our shoulder rocking. So for my shoulder taps, my feet are out wide for stability. My butt is about the same height as my shoulders and I'm just taking that slow and controlled, tapping each shoulder, okay? And what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna move those hips, keeping those hips as super stable as possible. And then I'm gonna go into my shoulder rocking. So, feet are in close to my butt, bringing those arms up. I go into my glute bridge, I'm gonna rotate this shoulder up, this shoulder down to the ground, as this hip elevates with that arm, taking it to the other side. All right, tiny little distinct movements. All right, you're gonna really feel that in your glutes. All right, so we're gonna start here in about three seconds. And we got our shoulder tap. So get set up on the ground. Three, two, one, go for it. Feet out wide, tapping, slow and controlled. Don't go fast with this, guys. 
Don't move those hips at all. Keep those hips super level, super stable. Got three seconds left. All right. Now, to go into my shoulder rocking, hips up. Squeeze those glutes. Glutes are active for 20 seconds as I'm bringing, reaching that one arm up, bringing that other shoulder down to the ground. Woo! Nice. Going back into my shoulder taps. Two, one, go for it. All right, two, one, yeah. Feeling all the feels with those shoulder taps, guys. All right, shoulder rocking. You got this? Hips up, reaching. That hip follows that arm just slightly, but you're keeping those glutes still super activated. Yeah, you got this? All right, going back into my plank shoulder taps. Three, two, one, going for it. Think about how slow you can go with this, especially when you're in this tripod. How controlled you can be, how strong your abs are on. That pillar of your body is super strong with this, guys. All right, now I'm going into my shoulder rocking. Glutes up and go. Uh, don't feel this in that lower back. Just get those glutes to activate. Hips up, hips up, reaching. As you're bringing that other shoulder to the ground. All right. Guys, this is our last set of each of these exercises. Last set. Best set. I really like these plank shoulder taps because you get to really feel how strong your core is getting keeping those hips super stable. All right, switching it back over. Boom, hips up. Ah. 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 Reaching. Reaching. Ah. All right. You guys, we did it. But what do we have now? Homework or dessert. All right. So Josh keeps telling me that I'm not getting deep enough in my Cossack lunge. I'm going to really work on that today. We're going to do that as Cossack lunges. Getting out long. Trying to get down as deep as you possibly can without losing it at the bottom. Getting this hamstring almost close to that calf and back up. Rotating that foot so that you're pointing up towards the ceiling, getting in deep, coming back in. Long and deep. 10 on each side. Oh. Oh. You got this. I think this is six. Ah. Oh. Seven. Woo. 
eight, nine, one, and ah, 10, yes. Four point hip mobility, coming down to the ground, elevating those knees off the ground, swing that knee out, touch that back foot, just tapping. Again, these are slow and controlled, just like those plank shoulder taps we just did. 10 on each side, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Woo! And guys, we're going into our archer planks, drawing that hand along that chest, following that hand with your eyes, getting that nice rotation in as we do this. Woo! Opening it all up. Wow. This is seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Yeah. That was surprisingly hard. I found that shockingly hard. Anyway, getting back to that story of the day where someone might tell you no, but you know you have something else to give inside of you. I have kind of a similar story. I um, was in high school and uh, was into theater and um, decided to, my sophomore year, try out for the speech team. And um, I didn't make it, and I was shattered. I couldn't believe it because I was a thespian. How could I not make it onto the speech team? And so then I uh, left for a year and I went to India as an exchange student. And then when I came back, I went to a totally different high school. And um, at that high school, I tried out for the speech team and I made it. And I was just winning meets left and right. And um, the, the person that I had auditioned for at the previous high school, uh, pulled me aside at one of the meets. She had judged me in one of the competitions, gave me really high, high scores. And she was like, I understand that you went to my high school. Why didn't you ever try out for the speech team there? And, and I was like, but I did. I tried out for you and I didn't make it. And uh, in my head, I was like, mic drop, slow turn, slow walk, explosion behind me, you know? But if I would have listened to that person, I would have maybe never thought that I had that ability in me. And uh, theater and performing had always given me so much joy that that would, have, that would have been suppressed and that would have been really sad, you know? So I'm glad I didn't listen to that person and I'm glad I kept going with it because um, absolutely performance and theater has always given me such great joy. We have so much inside of us in order to give and uh, just don't listen to the nose, you know? So anyway, we're here to help you bring forth the warrior within. And we will be here on Monday, Zoom Live, um, even though it's Memorial Day. Um, we're gonna keep our schedule as normal. All right. <laughs>